So this is why you should get started with generative AI in 2024. In this video here, we're pretty much going to cover all the trending stuff out there with large language models, some cool vision models, how you can generate both images, but also videos just from pure text. So there's tons of things going on in the generative AI space. First of all, we're going to talk about the large language models out there, which are the trending ones. We have all the models from OpenAI, Google, and Tropic, and so on. Right now, the state-of-the-art model is the Claude 3.5 Solid model from Anthropic. So all the big players out there are coming out with new models all the time, beating the benchmarks, coming out with new state-of-the-art models, which is very awesome. Some of them have advantages over each other. For example, with the Gemini 1.5 model, it has a significantly larger context window compared to the other large language models. But the best model right now is the Claude 3.5 Sonnet model. You can see it here on the benchmark. It basically just outperforms the GPT-4 O model on every single benchmark. So we have all the different large language models out there. Databricks also has their DBRX model, which is open source and also general purpose, which can be used. We have the Meta, so the Llama model from Meta. So large language models have been very popular since OpenAI released their first version just about a year ago. So this is very awesome. The models are becoming better and better over time. They're becoming larger. They're finding new architecture changes, but also improving the data, which they're feeding into the models. So we have the text area inside of generative AI, but we also have the vision aspect. So all of it is basically coming together now in multimodality. So we can have multimodal transform architectures, which both combines audio, text, and also vision. So that could be images, but also videos, all of it is running the transformer architecture under the hood. It's taking the data, converting it into an embedding space. And by doing that, you can have it in the exact same space, feed that into the transformer, and then you can do predictions, either generating images or generating text based on your inputs. So some of the most stunning visuals that you can create with AI is from the OpenAI Sora model. So they have released it. They've released a bunch of different videos. You can just take a text prompt. So just take the text, throw it into the model and it's going to generate a whole video for you. So it's yet to be released, but once it's out there, it's going to change the whole content creation and the whole video industry. So we also have a new model from Stability AI with their Stable Diffusion model, which is the third version. So you can take a prompt and generate images based on that and the level of detail, the level of details that you can put into the prompt and get out in the images as well is just very awesome. Google have come out with their own models, how to generate videos from text and so on. So this is definitely the direction for generative AI. Go from text to multimodalities, both how can you generate audio from text, generate images and also videos, and then you can compile all of that. So I'll say in the future here, you can just write a single prompt. You can just write a video, a movie script, and it's going to generate everything for you. The storyline, the audio, the, all the clips, the movies, it's going to clip all of it together and so on. So this is where it's heading, but it's also heading towards the direction where we're going to have agents act like doing tasks. So instead of just throwing in a prompt, getting a response out, and then you have to glue everything together, we're going in the direction of AI agents. So we have small specified agents that can perform tasks for us. So we can just prompt it to do whatever we want to do. So while all of this is happening in the generative AI space, we also have a lot of hardware coming along on the sideline, which can pretty much be combined at the end. So we have the Apple Vision Pro, we have the Neuralink from Elon Musk, where you can put a chip inside your brain, and then all of these electrodes will basically be able to communicate, it will be able to read and write, just as when your computer is writing to the memory of your computer. So all of this is converging, at the end of the day, it will be possible in the future to combine all of this together. So we have generative AI, we have the hardware coming along on the sideline, everything coming together, all the modalities, all the hardware, the future is really awesome. So this is the reason why you should get started and get into generative AI in 2024, because at the end of the day, this is going to transform the whole world. You can't really imagine the future if you don't really understand how all these things are coming together, how they're converging, basically the direction generative AI is heading. So all of this is pretty much coming together in the agents. We also have the cognitions Devin. So it's basically just a software engineering assistant. You can ask it to perform different tasks, coding tasks and so on. And it acts like works on real world 
projects. So you can pretty much do all the basic software engineering work from learning new technologies, building and deploying full scale apps, find and also fix boxes in your code base, but also its own code base, train its own AI models, contribute to open source production based code bases and so on. So it's basically just an AI agent that you can prompt to do different tasks on your computer and for your own systems. So this is pretty much the direction, combining all the modalities, the hardware is coming together. We have these specialized agents performing tasks in the real world. So if you're in the AI world, even if you're not, it is really important that you stay up to date with all these technologies to be able to just understand slightly what's going to happen in the future. So thanks a lot for watching this video here. Definitely let us know if you want to know more about generative AI, the direction it's heading, how does it affect computer vision? Can we potentially use large language model generative AI for computer vision in the future? So I hope you have gotten a ton of insights into the generative AI world, how all these things are coming together. I just hope to see you guys in one of the upcoming videos. Until then, happy learning.